My name is Rich Henry with Henry's Rabbit Ranch. And the way we got started um, with the Rabbit Ranch was when my youngest daughter was 20 years old, she got a little bunny for Easter. And the people at the pet store told her that it was a female. So a couple weeks later, she goes back and she gets a second rabbit for companionship for the first one. Well, the second one was a female. And about three months later, along come the first litter. And we kept telling her to get Pepper, who was the father, get them fixed. And she procrastinated and the second litter came, and even a third. So finally, after the third litter came, she did get the father fixed, but it was too late because the fourth litter came. And that gave us about 13 total bunnies with our original uh, Rabbit Ranch family. And uh, little by little, others followed. And uh, one of the most uh, famous ones uh, actually became a Rooster T6 icon. Her name was uh, Montana, or Queen Montana, who was queen of the Rabbit Ranch. And she sat here on the counter, like Hobo Jr. is doing, for seven years. At this point, we still have 25 little bunnies hopping around the grounds. And uh, besides the, the bunny bunnies, we have Volkswagen bunnies, Volkswagen rabbits. And at the last count, I think we had 12 or 13. But fortunately, like bunny rabbits, they don't multiply unless you bring more in. This is what used to be Shady Jack's Saloon and Camp Inn 10 years ago when we stayed here. Uh, obviously, it's not anymore. Looks like there was a fire. Not sure if that was a controlled burn just to demolish the building or accidental or, or something else, but it's sad to see. You can see the swimming pool that we spent the afternoon by. I found a few tiles from, that were lining up behind the bar. It was run by a guy named Shady Jack Larrison, an ex-cop and biker who got tired of getting shot at, so he decided to open up a bar for bikers. He had a little tattoo shop, uh, a leather repair place, uh, this first time we were here, this was filled completely with Vietnam Veterans uh, Motorcycle Club. Uh, the next time we came back, we were the only ones here. He was a heck of a guy and it was a heck of a place, and I'm sure a shame to see it gone, but like so many places on Route 66, it happens. In 1999, Tim and I spent the better half of a morning trying to find the old 9-foot section of Route 66 between Miami and Afton, Oklahoma. And after basically giving up, we were having lunch at the 66 Cafe in Afton, complaining about our inability to find the stretch of road. The waitress overheard us and basically walked over and offered up detailed instructions on how to get there. So here's what you do. Turn on the East 200 Road, where 69 and 44 cross, right by the Tech Center. Drive about a mile, and you'll be driving on a section of Route 66 that was paved in 1926. The Blue Whale of Catoosa is one of my favorite spots on Route 66. Hugh Davis built this back in the early 70s as an anniversary gift for his wife, Zelta. In 1999, when Tim and I came through, it had just had a fresh restoration, and it still looks pretty good. Jim Ross and Shelley Graham. These two are unique in the film because they were not directly involved with the production of the book though they were very influential in his planning because of the work they've done. Shelley's photography was my benchmark for the best 66 themed landscapes out there when I was researching what and how locations along 66 had been photographed. Jim Ross's maps were always open on the dash of the car. We would have had a much harder time getting down 66 and finding all the subtle nuances and nameless roads without the work he has done mapping the old roads. Tim and I had the pleasure of meeting them a few years after the book came out and we very much enjoyed the mutual respect we all had. I was curious about what they were up to now and very pleased that they agreed to be part of this film. I remember um, 1999 as being a research year for a book and I was researching the Coral Court Motel and I know it sounds freaky but I did a whole book on a motel in St. Louis, you know. I read uh, an article in a photo magazine and it was by a truck driving photographer. Um, his name was Daniel Baldwin and I was so inspired by this photo essay and his words that I said, oh, I, I would love to see this. But it was only at that time that I found out 
you mean you can still drive Route 66? I didn't know you could still drive it. Um, and I was living in St. Louis at the time, so it's like, oh my God. And then within the article it said, oh, just, you know, exit here off of Interstate 44 and go past the Six Flags exit and then take a left under the interstate and take a right and you're on it. And I'm like, I've never read anything that said, well, here's where you go. And I'm like, I'm living in St. Louis. I'm like, oh my God, let's go get it. Good golly. Um, well. In 1999, my son was six years old. Now he's 16 years old. I've got a teenager now. He thinks he knows everything. Yeah, so that's, that's different. No, he's a very handsome young man. Um, so my son is much older. And I have, I no longer live in St. Louis, Missouri. I spent 20 years there, but I am um, left there in 2007 and so I have lived here in central Oklahoma for two years you know I love Oklahoma it's so pretty it's so cool I mean there's Native American stuff and it's I just think it's just so rich I just think it's pretty you know, I don't have any good vocabulary right now but it's it's good um, I'm also single now that's very different um, but, you know, I moved here also to be closer to someone else, and that's good. Mr. Jim. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time in Arcadia as well as Chandler, but I love Chandler. It's just so cute. We've got the Route 66 Interpretive Center. We have the Pioneer Museum. We have our own theater. I mean, a really talented theater company, Lincoln County on stage. And it's cute. And then I did a billboard. They asked me to do a billboard in Chandler. <laughs> Isn't that fun? It says, Welcome to Chandler. It's, you can only see it westbound. You didn't see it, did you? Oh, damn. Okay. 1999. I was uh, working on the new edition of my Oklahoma Route 66 guidebook, which was long overdue. The first edition had been out of print for about a year. I was also working on... Uh, a DVD that uh, we, we produced called Bones of the Old Road. And uh, so I was pretty busy with Route 66 stuff then. Of course, I was still working full time as well. As time went on, uh, we got it in our, our heads to publish a book covering the entire route from Chicago to LA and all the intricate pathways and all the little ins and outs and nooks and crannies. and as we as we worked our way into that, we realized that it was uh, it was more than a normal person would want to chew on. It, it was it would have been about an eight or nine hundred page book. So we kind of uh, backed up and uh, re reset our sights and decided to do a, a map series, a separate foldout map for each state, and uh, designed something that was geared toward the current day tourist to just simply get them down the road, give them some history, some points of interest, and keep them on track, and that's how it happened. Uh, we've lost a lot in the last 10 years in terms of icons, um, which is unfortunate, but we've also had some successes in terms of saving properties, uh, resurrecting some landmarks and icons, and we've got some new icons uh, like Pops uh, down the street, which is uh, pretty much uh, already established itself as uh, one of the places to stop when you're traveling Route 66. So there's been a lot of change, some good, some bad, but, but the old road's still hanging in there and, and doing well. It's, it's, it amazes me, uh, you know, I keep waiting for, for this whole craze to hit a plateau and level off and reach a point where people are just sick of hearing the, the phrase Route 66, but uh, it's not happening. And I, I, I now believe it's not going to happen. I think, I think people today look at Route 66 or, or, or regard Route 66 almost like they would a, a national park or a national monument. It's become so ingrained in the lexicon that people are now, you know, it's, it's like, you say, well, someday I want to go to Yellowstone or someday I'm going to do uh, Disney World. It's, it's like that with Route 66 now. It's, 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 I think it's here to stay.